Thanks for staying tuned to your station, the African Internet Television. Welcome to your program, Security Watch Africa. Only on this channel, we give you that information you need to keep your life safe and secured. Welcome to the program today. My name still remains Patrick Abambo. Because of time, we'll just be going straight to uh, the content which we'll have for you. Some reports and discussion. In the studio already with me, it's uh, my brother, uh, a, a professional to the call, and a man who has seen it all when it in terms of um, uh, stories, um, um, editing and reporting stories and writing of features. He's a great writer himself, talking about um, Suleiman Obagaya. Suleiman Obagaya was a former uh, national deputy um, president of Nigerian Guild of Editors. He is the chief executive of Sky Limit Media Group and uh, a member of the World Editors Forum. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. Today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> um, I think before I go on, um, there are some disturbing news coming uh, from Imo State once again. It's so sad that um, um, IPOP members, I know that some people would say no, unknown government, but uh, reports and investigation have established that these are actually IPOP members and ESN members, the Eastern Security Network members, uh, attacked the house of the private house of the governor of Imo State in his village in Amuma Oru in uh, Imo State. This is sad, really, uh, because um, I think from a uh, report, he's the only one who has come up to speak against the actions of these unruly youths or unruly persons in the southeastern part of Nigeria, and they decided to attack his home. This is very, very commendable. And well, I think the elders in the southeast should speak up against what is happening in that area. Everybody seems to be silent. And uh, in life, in philosophy, silence seems to be acceptance. Maybe they are accepting the not with the situation that is there, but I think it cannot continue. No reasonable person will sit back, as a, especially the elders, sit back and allow this to happen. Enough is enough. If we must condemn what is happening in other parts of the country, we must condemn what is also happening in every other part of the country. This cannot be allowed in a sovereign country, in a country that has uh, the rule of law and the law and order and order. Uh, I, I call on security agencies, the military, the police and uh, all the intelligence groups to actually fish out the perpetrators of this act and uh, they take decisive action against it. Yes, um, as we're calling on security agencies to do, do that, we also want to bring to the attention of the uh, leadership of the Nigerian police. Um, many times you talk about um, uh, the number of personnel you have is not enough to police the country. Well, we can see how you assign your personnel to some people of no known characters, sorry to use the words, but in reality, um, the picture that is all over the social media and everywhere, many Nigerians have spoken against it, but Security Watch Africa wants to say that this is actually not acceptable, where a young man um, who is not entitled to have persecuted person, person, even if it's entitled. I know in the police you have the special protection unit, but these personnel on screen you are seeing are not special uh, protection unit personnel. These are mobile police officers who are supposed to come out when there are crises. The IGP uh, is expected to do the needful, and he, he announced the withdrawal of these people, but it's, it seems that um, when you give money to the police, then you get uh, the protection you deserve. But I don't want to believe that. I believe that we have credible leadership in the police who should do the necessary thing. Whoever that is and whoever is carrying police, moving about with police, who is not supposed to, police should do the needful. And so we can have enough policemen to protect the large majority of Nigerians. Yes, uh, away from that, let's go to our report. We are, we are giving a pause out because we want to see how to bring a solution to He's talking about COVID-19 vaccination. Um, a report is that in Nigeria and some other countries, there is a pause in vaccination because of scarcity of vaccine. Um, Security Watch Africa, Peg Yagbe, puts this um, puzzle together. Sit back as we bring you this. Some 15 months on from the First Nations lockdown across the world, some countries are still experiencing the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. Countries across Europe are once again building up restrictions to battle the third wave. 
The almost 41 million cases recorded across Europe rank second to North and South America, which have recorded 53 million cases, making it the worst hit of the World Health Organization's six regions, according to its COVID-19 dashboard. India has just recorded 314,835 new cases, which is the highest daily rate ever recorded in any country since the pandemic began. This has given rise to a new development putting production of the United Kingdom's developed AstraZeneca vaccine on pause, thereby destabilizing vaccine availability to nations using it because labor at the pharmaceutical sites are being affected. Nigeria, on its part, has stopped the administration of the vaccine in order to complete doses for the first recipients pending the availability of more vaccines. At a point as delicate as this, there is need for nation's government to find all the measures of producing the COVID-19 vaccines, just like Egypt has entered partnership agreement with Russia Sputnik to begin development of 40 million doses a year in Egypt. Will Nigeria and other countries in Africa follow suit? There are reports that wealthy nations are hoarding available vaccines, thereby making it unavailable for less wealthy nations as part of international politics. The question is, is it morally and economically right for nations to hold these life-saving vaccines while millions of people are dying? Can't less affected nations be contracted to help facilitate production of vaccines? These and more, Security Watch Africa will find out in our next episode. Peggy Agbe, Security Watch Africa, Abuja. Welcome back. Yeah, we will endeavor to find out answers to those questions. Uh, but um, really, it's quite disturbing. But until you are vaccinated, until everybody is vaccinated, we're expected to put on our face masks regularly, observe all the necessary protocols of uh, washing of hands, and so that we can protect ourselves and our loved ones. Until then, please remain safe and stay safe, like it said in the report. Let's okay, okay, quickly uh, go to the Army headquarters uh, in Abuja, where the, the newly appointed Inspector General of Police visited the Chief of Army Staff. Let's find out what happened there. Uh, Shuli Daniels for, of Security Watch Africa was there too. It was a busy day at the Nigerian Army headquarters as the Chief of Army Staff Lief Nanjana Ibrahim Atahiro play host to numbers of critical stakeholders who were at the Army headquarters to pay cuts to visit. The Senate Committee on Army, led by Senator Alin Dume, was first to come calling. The visit, which was held behind closed doors, offered the visitors and the Army hierarchy the opportunity to rob minds on critical national issues while strategizing on the way forward for Nigerian security. At the end of the closed-door deliberation, the Chairman Senate Committee on Army, Senator Alin Dume, gave a brief of discussions. They have a daunting task of you know, mitigating the various security challenges that we have in the country. And uh, the National Assembly is very important in terms of giving the necessary legislative support to the Nigerian Army. And that's why we had a closed-door session to have an understanding of the issues before them now that they have, uh, they are about settling down and the expectation is so high. Following on the heels of the legislator's visit was the arrival of the newly appointed Acting Inspector General of Police, IGP Usman Akali Baba, who came with some members of his management team to familiarize themselves with the leadership of the Nigerian Army. Briefing the Chief of Army Staff, Lief Nanjana Ibrahim Atahiro on the reasons for his visit. IGP Baba said that his visit is to pledge his unalloyed support to the military for the two security agencies of government to work together to provide a noble environment for the citizens. It is quantum for anybody to say under this circumstance that we are that police is the lead agency in internal security. Yes, it may be, but the circumstances we are requires the military in this country, all over the states. And therefore, I need to come here and pledge my unalloyed support, cooperation, collaboration, and synergy with the military to enable us provide the required environment for citizens of this country.
to go about their local businesses. In his speech, the Chief of Army Staff congratulates the IGP on his appointment and says that his appointment, like that of the service chiefs, came at a time when Nigeria is facing myriads of security challenges. Let me start by congratulating you on your well-deserved appointment as the number one cop in Nigeria. Your appointment, no doubt, is a reflection of the confidence reposed in you by the President Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is also a reflection of your commitment and selfless service to our dear nation. Your appointment, just like we, the service chief, is coming at a time when the country is facing a riot of security challenges that includes insurgency, banditry, kidnapping, secessionist agitations in different parts of the country. The Army Chief expressed confidence to the ability of the security agencies in restoring the confidence of citizens in the Nigerian police force. While the challenges appear daunting, I am confident that with your pedigree, experience and knowledge, you will within the shortest possible time restore the confidence of the populace and the ability of the Nigerian police and indeed all other services to protect and secure our nation. Let me equally use this opportunity to appreciate the good work of the officers and men of the Nigerian police who tirelessly work to ensure we have a crime-free society. I want to assure you that the Nigerian army under my leadership will continue to synergize and support the Nigerian police to build appropriate capacities so that we can collectively secure Nigeria in line with our constitutional rules. With this visit, the army leadership is poised to sustain the fight against all forms of criminality in Nigeria and quickly restore the nation to the path of security. Shirley Daniels, Security Watch Africa, Abuja. Welcome back. Um, we'll quickly go to the Nigeria Immigration Service Headquarters where something is, is happening there. Um, they, they launch a new visa, uh, passport regime will commence 1st of June this year. Sit back as we bring you this report by Elizabeth Tanko. In the desire to make passport processing and issuance seamless and secured, the Minister of Interior, Ogben Yerawuf Arigbeshola, in collaboration with the Comptroller General of the Nigerian Immigration Service, Mohamed Babandede, conveyed an interactive meeting with all passport control officers in 42 passport offices nationwide and immigration attaches in Nigerians' foreign missions who joined virtually. The minister who supervises immigration services in Nigeria commended the controller general and personnel of the agency for working tirelessly in service delivery. I must commend you all for your good works and sacrifices as you work hard to manage stressful and challenging tasks of providing a Nigerian passport to those who apply for it. For most parts, you are the receiving end of the backlash of the challenges emanating from a flawed process that is not of your own making, and you bear with stoic resilience. I give you kudos. In his remarks, CGI Babandede says that the interactive session is to strengthen service delivery in Nigeria and abroad while providing security for the country. Enhancement of the security of our passport includes the following. We are using four fingers, thumbprint and index, but today we have improved to ten fingers. Uh, it had a lot of implications because it was being abused, but we have moved it from uh, four fingers to ten fingers. We have integrated and harmonized national identity NIN with our, our passport. This will reduce identity theft. I'm glad to say NIS is the first agency of government that has made NIN mandatory for issuance of identity document. All others are following gradually. And this is a great investment to national security. We have also successfully connected to the Interpol lost and stolen database. We are the only country in Africa 
that is connected to real time online to the Interpol database of lost and stolen passports. We are the only country. We are very proud of that security feature. During the interactive section with media, both the minister and CGI gave answers to some questions. I want all, all, all eligible Nigerians to have the passport as the most authentic identity document. All passport, which means the old generation passport, uh, 64 pages, 5 years, validity 22,500. 32 pages, which is 5 years, validity 17,500. The enhanced passport, which has additional security features, uh, which is connected with the name, uh, 32 pages for five years, 27,500. 64 pages, five years, it means bigger page, 64 pages, but only for five years, validity, 37,500. 64 page, 10 years, 72 page, 200. Why are they different menu? because it is such different people. With the new visa regime, built to commence 1st of June 2021, it is obvious that the Ministry of Interior, working in good partnership with the Nigerian Immigration Service, is poised to ensuring that issues surrounding shortage, timely service delivery, bottlenecks, touting, third party and other vices mitigating against effective and efficient service delivery in passport centers are eliminated. Elizabeth Thanko, Security Watch Africa, Abuja. Welcome back. Yes, um, the, the Contragent of Immigration actually doing a great work there to enhance security in Nigeria. And uh, Security Watch Africa had an exclusive interview with him, which we'll bring to you in the subsequent edition of this program, where he highlighted some of those measures that is put in place to ensure that uh, unwanted people do not get into the country again. Uh, let me come back to the studio I have here with me, uh, like I said earlier, Suleiman Obagaya. He's not a new face, um, he's familiar uh, with what we are discussing. Mm -hmm. But let me, the last, from the last time you came to now, there seems to be increased security challenge in the country. Um, everywhere like is on fire now. Uh, would you agree with that? Yeah, honestly speaking, uh, the security situation in the country has continued to worsen. And it is shocking to hear that because uh, I understand that a lot of proactive measures have been taken. But then in my previous appearances on this program, I have always insisted in the fact that unless the citizens drive intelligence, there could hardly be any difference between who mans our security services. Mm. Whether you change service chiefs a million times, there could hardly be any difference. In as much as the locals will not drive intelligence. Look at what the army is now saying. It has said so before. People didn't believe when the former services were holding sway. Exactly. You know that the locals were the one giving information about the movement of troops. And the same thing is happening till today. You understand? Unless that is uh, that is stemmed, the security situation is going to continue to worsen. Not even the best armies in the world could handle our security situation. Sure, sure, sure. Unless, of course, the locals are made to understand that they have 60% role to play in terms of uh, provision of national so, I think that uh, the locals have even 70 percent more than exactly. that because a lot they have to do but exactly. uh, we'll, we'll come into that but it's sad again the news coming out that uh, two of the three of the students that were adopted in uh, the Greenfield University private university in Kaduna were found dead uh, people have said that uh, they may have been killed by the bandits, but um, from information security watch Africa gathered uh, the condition where these people were kept were actually not good enough because it's raining season in the forest. Some of them fell sick. And that brings to the point where I want to uh, ask you. Because what happened was that these bandits had to attack a hospital hmm. and adopted some nurses. Yeah. I, I, apparently, maybe to take care of their victims. Exactly. But sadly, three of them have died. Now, this brings us to another issue. When we talk about security, uh, the governor of Kano State, uh, Kaduna State, uh, okay. big, but did say that um, schools should be located where security uh, can be provided for them. What do you think should be done to prevent or mitigate this situation we are having now? Because adoption seems to be everywhere in all parts of the country. 
Well, I'm happy that earlier in the week uh, there was this safe school initiative that was launched here in Abuja. So hopefully uh, through that initiative some cogent measures would be taken. And very clearly what it means now is that we can no longer have especially boarding schools in long places. Mm. There has to be, you know, you have to maybe uh, stop some of these, close down some of these schools and match them with existing ones, closer to the urban areas. Because security is more pronounced mostly in urban areas. So yes. uh, I believe uh, those in the far long areas, especially the boarding houses, should be closed and uh, matched with the ones that are closer to urban centers. Some, some, some we say this is uh, plain to the, the court, what the bandits or whatever want. They want to have a country that is controlled by them. It's, would that action be controlled by the bandits, so to, so to say? Well, uh, the measure I'm proposing is not going to be a permanent one. It's just on the temporary, on a temporary basis. Okay. Uh, right now, the police personnel are not adequate. Mm. Uh, but, but, but you can see some being posted to some <laughs> private pers persons. To yeah, do other things. I, I'm happy the new IGP has rolled out what you call his 12-point agenda. Mm. And the number two on that agenda is uh, the withdrawal of policemen from private individuals. Po previous uh, IGPs have also made the same pronouncements exactly. without it being affected. So we look forward to seeing this new IGP breaking that jinx. Uh, of course, as you rightly said, we have seen individuals, some of them even, uh, I'm sorry to use the word, entities you know, being uh, granted. Uh, granted so many policemen, polling them about. We've seen situations where policemen carry, male policemen, carrying handbags. the handbags of the uh, wives yeah. of some so-called uh, VIPs, you know. And uh, in fact, somebody told me that about 50% of Nigerian policemen are in private houses. Are in private houses. <laughs> and the whole of them, how many policemen do we have? Less than 400,000. So, but if this IGP will walk the talk and ensures that uh, this policemen guarding private citizens are drawn back to yeah. the to, 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 to the barracks or to the offices you know to for operational uh, purposes i'm sure we're going to have uh, a more impactful for this one yeah just just like the control general of immigration they told me that they have drawn their men many of them who sh shut down some offices to post some to the border lines to be able to show up the number of personnel or the border to increase the number i think the ig may have to adopt that but um during the week, the IGP visited the what we could call the uh, defense <laughs> uh, defense uh, collection, the defense headquarters, the army headquarters, the naval headquarters, and the air force headquarters, mm -hmm. and uh, to say, look, I'm ready to work with you. What would you say to this visit? Honestly, I commend the IGP because what it means is that uh, ego does not bother him. He doesn't have any ego. All he is after is accomplishment. Mm. That is accomplishment of national goals, national security goals. Mm. So he needs to partner really. There has to be that synergy between the entire structure of our security services for them to achieve any meaningful result. Mm. And I am happy that the police that was seen as uh, a kind of outsider, you know, the military sees itself as one and the police as a different yeah, entity right. altogether. Mm. So with the move now being made by the new IGP, obviously there will be a stronger synergy between the police and the and the military. Mm. Yeah, so uh, it's a good thing. Because he was also he was also at the naval headquarters and also at the Air Force to look at. Uh, at the Air Force, the, uh, particularly the Chief of Air Staff commended uh, him because he believed that they have carried out a lot of uh, operations and activities together. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you think that it's, it's possible for the police to actually work with these people seamlessly without uh, rancor? Yeah, the only way it can be done without Ranko is if the new IGP ensures or, or reorient, reorient the psyche of some of his personnel. Mm. You know, there is this allegation that uh, some policemen, and one of the key reasons why citizens hardly even trust our security services by volunteering information is because as far as the police is concerned, there has always been this fear that if you pass any information to them, chances are that they are going to divulge, uh, reveal it, 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 who, who has the information. So they are going to give you away, kind of. Yeah, so but, but that is old time. It doesn't happen again. 
Yeah, I think it doesn't. But there could be one or two instances, yes, maybe course. a few instances. Yes, yes. So uh, the IGP really needs to look at that very deeply. Okay. It remains an allegation, but he needs to look at it very deeply and ensure that only the right kind of personnel that are upright in character are posted to uh, some places. Okay. Mm. <laughs> you, are, you are an editor, extraordinary international editor. <laughs> one of the uh, news headlines that, that came up between yesterday and today was that the, the new IGP's village attacked, you know, and uh, given impression about uh, maybe he was targeted or whatever <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, Gedam in Yobe State was attacked, which is dental is where he came from. Uh, as a news person, <laughs> Do you think there's a way our media could assist in this fight against insecurity in the country? Because it's not only, only terrorism and insurgents we are fighting now. The cultism is getting worse in River State as we speak. River State is also oh, oh, is on fire, but it's underreported yeah. because cultists have taken over. They killed, just two days ago, they killed about 10 persons and more. Mm. How do you think the media can actually help in this? Okay, let me first of all say that attacks on Gaidam is not a new thing. Boko Haram has carried out several attacks in the past on Gaidam town. I've been there about six weeks ago. I've yeah. even been to one of the most dangerous places in the world, that is Difa in Niger Republic. So I passed through uh, Gaidam and I know how dangerous the place could be. I had a peel of what it is. Yeah. And uh, narrowing it down to the new IGP, I think is not professionally correct. Okay. Uh, you know, if it were maybe uh, an entirely new attack, mm. maybe you could narrow it down to him. And in any case, uh, I, I still don't look at it as being correct, yeah, honestly. Correct. In any and way you look at it, uh -huh, it's, anyway look at it, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's very unfair to the new IGP <laughs> who is up and doing, you know, Arrange. doing a lot, making sure that uh, the security situation improves in Nigeria. And secondly, the media, is not for nothing that the media, the constitution recognizes okay. the media as like the port arm of government, yeah. as the port instead of the realm. Yeah. It is because of the indispensable role the media will play in national integration mm -hmm. and national security. Mm -hmm. There is no way the security services could achieve any meaningful result without, without the media, media really giving them... Okay. On bias All support. right, we'll, we'll, we'll continue from there. <laughs> next, next, okay. uh, next episode of this program, God willing, next week. Uh, we must go for other programs to continue. Until you come away again next week, I say thanks for staying tuned and bye for now.